Hello friends, welcome to CAD Maniac. This is Jitavo. This lecture is completely dedicated to those who are using AutoCAD for the very first time. So first of all, I'll tell you about the interface of this version of AutoCAD. As you can see, this is AutoCAD 2016. It won't matter if you have 2010, 2013 or even 2019 because overall the interface is more or less the same. So I'll quickly introduce you to the interface now. This box in the upper left corner is known as application menu. When you left click on this menu, you will find some of the tools which you will find in every basic application software such as new, open, save, save as, export etc. Right to the application menu exists the quick access toolbar. Here you will find the same tools as in the application menu but the difference is that you can access the tools quickly in only one click. Whereas if you want to save a file through application menu you will need at least two clicks. You have to click on menu bar and then click on save to save the file. Moving on, these are called tabs, home tab, insert tab, annotate tab, parametric tab, up to performance tab. Now this complete portion is known as ribbon. Here you can see some partition lines. So from one partition line to another partition line is known as a panel. So this panel is known as draw panel. This one is modify panel, annotation panel, up to view panel. And these are called tools, line tool, polyline tool, circle tool, arc tool and so on. This is the drawing tab. When you will open the AutoCAD application, it will look like this. So you have to click on start drawing or else if you have a template, then you have to select the template from here. But for beginners, just click on start drawing option. Then if you want to open another drawing tab, simply click on this plus symbol. Now this is the drawing area. This is the command line. Whenever you input a command through the keyboard or through clicking on any tool, it will prompt you to do the next step. So I will recommend everyone who is a beginner to have your eyes always on the command line. It will be a great help to learn quickly. Now this is the view cube. This one is the navigation bar, insert nav bar and this one at the bottom is known as status bar. I'll come to all of these later. First I'll tell about the mouse functions. I'll draw a circle for better understanding of the mouse functions. So when I scroll upwards you can see it's zooming in. When I scroll downwards it's zooming out. And when I press and hold the scroll button you will see a hand like symbol appears. So now just move the mouse and it will move the drawing window. This is known as pan or panning. Now I'll show the process of selecting objects through the mouse. So the first way of selection is just left click on the object and it gets selected. So for cancelling the selection use escape key. Escape key is used in AutoCAD for cancelling any command. Next way of selecting object is known as blue window selection. We will find out how it is done. So left click here and you will see a blue window is being formed whenever I move the mouse towards right. And when I move the mouse towards left a green window is being formed. So you can see whenever the circle gets completely inside this window then only the circle gets highlighted. So I have to click here again to select the circle. See if I click here and here the circle doesn't get selected. So an object should completely come within the window to get selected. Now for the green window selection left click here move the mouse towards left and a green window is being formed. Now you can see the circle gets highlighted even if the window touches the circle. It doesn't matter if the circle is completely within the green window or not. Then left click here again to select the circle. The green window should just touch the object to be able to select it. This is the UCS user coordinate system. This is the origin actually 00. It consists of x-axis and y-axis. And when we will do isometric drawings or 3D models, we will have z-axis as well. Now I'll tell about the function keys roles in AutoCAD. Every function key has its own role. I'll create two viewports so that it will be easy to show you the functions. So I'll type viewport and press enter. I'll select two vertical viewports and then click on OK. I'll zoom the text in this viewport and in this one I'll show you the operations. So I'll start with function key F1. So the moment I press F1 key, a help window pop-ups. Now suppose you want to know about the circle command. So just type circle in the search bar and press enter. Then click on circle command 
and you will find every possible way of creating a circle here you can see center radius here as well then diameter diameter then three point then tan 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 then two point and then tan tan radius so you have to search as per your requirement next is f2 so when i press f2 a series of command pop-ups which i have given after opening this drawing tab so i'll press escape key to cancel this window now if i press f2 again you can see the last command here is cancel press escape and press f2 again you will see two cancel commands back to back so f2 gives the command history of the current tab next is f3 for better understanding of the object snap i'll draw a circle a rectangle and a line as well of any dimension now suppose i want to draw a circle concentric to the existing circle so when i click on circle tool i need to specify the center of the circle so how will i know the center of the circle if i click anywhere assuming that this is the center and draw the circle then these circles won't be concentric now suppose i want to draw a circle at the midpoint of this line by assuming the midpoint and drawing the circle is in the right way so now i'll press f3 to turn on the 2d object snap then click on circle tool again and whenever i hover the cursor over the circle you can see the center snap of the circle is showing then click at the center snap and draw the circle and then erase this one same way you can see the midpoint snap is showing here as well click at the snap and draw the circle then erase this one as well so whenever you click on any tool and hover the cursor over the 2d entities all the snaps will be shown to the right of the object snap you will find a small drop down arrow so when you click on this arrow you will find all the snaps we will get to know all of these time to time with some examples now select all the 2d elements and delete these now we will know about 3d object snaps i'll switch to southwest isometric view for better understanding of the function kf4 so you can click at this corner or this home icon to get into southwest isometric view now i'll draw a box so that i can make you understand the 3d object snap i'll change the visual style to conceptual now suppose i want to draw a circle at the center of this face as you can see the center snap of this face is not showing so i'll press f4 to turn on the 3d object snap now you can see the 3d center snap is showing so you can click at the center snap and specify any radius to draw the circle we will know more about 3d snap when we will start 3d drawings next i'll tell about dynamic ucs then we will come to isoplane toggle now suppose i want to draw a circle at this face so i click on circle tool then at this 3d center now it's quite evident that the circle is parallel to xy plane but i wanted the circle to be parallel to xz plane so what we will do is turn on the dynamic ucs so press f6 to do that then again click on circle tool now you can see on whichever face i am putting the cursor on that particular face gets highlighted so the ucs is dynamically set to the particular face now you can click at this 3d center and draw the circle as you can see this is properly aligned now same way you can draw the circles at the other faces as well now select all the objects and delete this now we will know what is isoplane toggle for that i have to make a change in the drafting settings so i'll type ds and press enter then i'll go to snap and grid tab and then turn on the isometric snap and press ok i'll change the visual style back to 2d wireframe then click on top view now if i press f5 you can see the isoplane toggle the plane changes every time i press f5 it switches between isoplane left isoplane right and isoplane top we will get to know more about this when we will do isometric drawings for now i'll change the drafting settings back to rectangular snap now we will know what is grid you can see the graph paper like system in the drawing area that is known as grid you can turn on and turn off the grid by pressing f7 so now we will get to know about ortho suppose i want to draw a line dead straight be it horizontal or vertical but how will i know that the line is absolutely straight or not so i have to press f8 to do that the moment i press f8 you can see the line has got straight 
Now you can only draw horizontal or vertical lines using the mouse in any direction. Now we will know about snap mode. I am clicking on line tool, pressing F8 to turn off the ortho, then drawing a few lines randomly. I don't feel any restriction while drawing the lines. I can click anywhere I want, but as soon as I press F9 to turn on the snap mode and click on line command, you can see only the corner snaps of the grids are active. I can click only at those points. So F9 restricts the user to click only at the corner snaps of the grid. If I turn off the snap mode and try to draw a few lines again, you can see there is no restriction at all. Then select all the lines and delete this. Now we will know about polar tracking. So when I press F10 to turn on the polar tracking, the ortho gets off. Then when I turn on the ortho, the polar tracking gets off. I'll press F10 again to turn on the polar tracking. Then I click on line tool, turn on the ortho again. As you can see, only vertical or horizontal lines are possible. But when I press F10, lines at any particular angles are possible. If I click at the downwards arrow to the right of polar tracking, lines at these angles are possible. Suppose you want to draw a line at 18 degrees interval. Then click on this. Now if you move the mouse, a green extension line is showing at every 18 degrees interval such as 18, 36, 54, 72 and so on. You can click at whatever interval you want as per your requirement. Now I'll tell about object snap tracking. Suppose you have two lines like this and I need to draw a line at some distance from this endpoint snap aligned to this line. So I have to track the endpoint snap towards right to do that. But if I try to do that, I can't track the point. But the moment I press F11 to turn on the object snap tracking, you can see I can track the snap towards right, this snap upwards. By tracking these two lines, I have got the intersection of these two extension lines. Now I can click at this intersection and draw a line in any direction. If I repeat the line command and click at this point, and if I want to track this end point, I can do that as well. Just hold the cursor at the point for a second and then move the cursor towards the desired tracking direction. It shows a green extension line. So you can click again to draw the line. Now delete all the lines. Now we will see what is dynamic input. I'll draw a line then turn off the ortho. As you can see when I move the cursor the distance as well as the angle shows dynamically. But when I press F12 to turn off the dynamic input the values doesn't shows. Again when I press F12 you can see the values. Now suppose I want to draw a line of length 15 at an angle of 50 degree. So I'll just move the cursor so that the angle is 50 degrees and specify the length as 15 and press enter to draw the line. Now if I check the align distance this is 15. So I would recommend everyone to turn on the dynamic input while working. So these are the functions of all the function keys. Now I'll change the two vertical viewports to single viewport again. So in the next video, we will learn how the lines are drawn with the help of some sample drawings. I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you face any difficulty while understanding, so you can comment below in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So this is it for this tutorial guys. Bye bye.